guys. Watch Slinger 2 back at you. We uh, made this handle, deer bone handle in one video. Went over a second video uh, showing you guys how to, how to engrave it. Leave your marks. Lacquer, it's all lacquered, nice and shiny. Today what we're going to be doing is uh, making a leather sheath for it. We're going to do that out of a belt. Well, I'm going to do that out of a belt. If you got any other kind of leather around, feel free to use whatever kind of leather you got. You want to use something thick because it's a sheath. But uh, what you got to make sure though is it's, if you're using a belt, that it's actual leather. It's not two plies glued together. A lot of times you got like a leather veneer and it's glued over some crappy stuff you got to make sure that you got a nice actual hunk of leather so in this video we're going to go over some different little things about the leather i'll show you how to do some leather hand stitching um i'm kind of learning it myself but you can learn it with me and we're going to have a ply stitched in here with the middle missing for the blade to sit in. Back side is going to be solid and we're going to stitch the front side over it instead of a typical sheath where it just where it just kind of closes together and you slide the knife in. I'd like something in between to to kind of uh, to kind of prevent the knife from cutting the stitching as it's going in and out which is where our our second piece, third piece, I guess, comes in handy. Um, you can buy leather trimming tools and whatever. What I'm doing is I have a, uh, you could use an X-Acto knife. I got a razor, just something. If you're cutting it with scissors, it's gonna kind of throw it all off. Your cuts are gonna be wavy. Typically, someone would use, well, not quite this, is a pick or a hole punch. Um, if I was going to use this for the leather, what I probably would do, and you'll probably see me using it later to stitch, I would probably put this on my grinder and grind this down to not so much a finer point, but to give about an inch of it. Just just bring it down to maybe three sixteenths. Where, where it's not generating a really big hole. Um, what I'm gonna be using in this one is I have this Malco punch. It's made for, it's actually made for tin, uh, vinyl siding, stuff like that. Also works really well on leather. You just, you put your leather in, in between, punch it, makes a perfect hole every time. The reason I'm using, using that is um, a big part of the reason is I'm going with this very thick wax coated nylon string which is basically what you use to stitch leather but since I'm going with this big string the leather is gonna the string is gonna pass through each hole twice you'll see later when we get to the stitching part and so the big hole isn't going to hurt me actually it's going to help me a little bit but yeah we got to mark our spots on the leather I'm using a ballpoint pen shows up good on the black leather and we'll go around with our punch and get everything punched before we start before we start sewing it together You would want, well, for one, you wouldn't want to be on a plastic cutting board. You'd want to be on a piece of wood or something that's got some give. But first, you would mark yourself a straight line, and then off of that line, you would basically go about every eighth of an inch is where you'd make a hole every eighth of an inch. Since these are bigger holes. I'm going with a hole probably every three sixteenths, maybe a little little bigger than that. Um, but you'd put it on there, whack it with a hammer, do your next one, whack it with a hammer, do your next one. But the only way that you're 
you would make your stitching because you do want your stitching to be all in a roll you don't want it jagged and falling everywhere so the only way to do that is to make you a line on your leather first then mark each spot where you're gonna punch a hole then punch your holes the other way to do it is they sell what they call leather iron I will uh, I'll, I don't I don't actually have one but I will look one of those up for you and I'll throw a picture of one online and it looks looks basically kind of looks like a fork and it's got like 10 or 12 little prongs to it so you would make your line still along your leather but then you would start with that little that iron and you'd stand it up on the line pound it make put your holes through you would put one hole in one prong in the last hole to make sure your spacing stays the same pound it and repeat all the way around that would give you better spacing um, again that would be for a smaller diameter wax string but they sell all of these in a lot of different diameters um, so you know I'm, I'm obviously a novice at it but um, you know if I was gonna do a huge amount of leather work I probably would invest in an iron um, or something a little bit less tedious to make all these holes okay so like I said this is going to be the, the belt loop hole for the knife so I have my spot marked marked on the back here you can see the pen I have a spot mark, spot marked across the back and that is where this piece needs to go to just by design here um, and the other important part is that when you have your punch in your holes you need both holes on both sides to be in the same place so in order to acquire that you can take your hand hole punch here and you go around you don't have to hit it with a hammer or anything you're not going through it but you go into each hole wiggle it around a little bit what you're needing is a dent in the leather that's underneath it so that you know where your next set of holes has to go so now you can see we have our our punched leather here back here is our our uh, dented leather so this is where I'm going to punch the next holes All right, so on these little pieces here, we're going to use a little tiny clamp just to kind of hold the stuff where we want it, where the holes line up so we're not dealing with two separate pieces of stuff, and uh, it'll just make the goings on a little, little easier. Okay, so we got our three pieces. 
back, center, top. We punched the uh, we punched them all exactly the same how I showed you. Then I have this mark with the pattern of the knife on it. I'm gonna cut out the center. I just left the center in while it was patched. Or while I was uh punching the holes, sorry. So now you can kind of see what I was talking about before is the knife is going to slide in into the separated piece and this is going to go on the top that's just creating us a hollow space for the blade and as the blade goes in and out the reason for this is as the blade goes in and out here sliding against this other piece of material rather than sliding in and out in between two pieces, possibly cutting stitches. Now what we got to do, I'm going to put a little bit of, we're going to put this piece back in just to hold it in position correctly. A little bit of adhesive in between these two pieces and a little bit of adhesive in between these two pieces and then we'll get to some stitching there's plenty of fabric or leather adhesive out there um, again novice but what I have is a uh, is a e6000 fabric fuse and one of the things that it uh, does label on here that it's good for is leather. And uh, so the stitching is going to hold it together. It's just an extra something. So just when you when you buy an adhesive, if you plan on using an adhesive, make sure it's something that says a bond leather. To measure your string, a basic system, what I've been using seems to be working for me. We got about six inches here, which means we're going about 12 inches. Um, if I was going through two pieces of material, I would quadruple that. So instead I added a little more better safe than sorry um, but I basically measured it out six times the length which is 72 so I just stretched that to, to 80 so I got 80 inches worth of string so I got it through my my needles here you can see this is a, it's a leather needle it's just got a bigger longer eye and a trick for threading your needle is you can put you put your wax thread on pull your razor blade down on tight of it and then Pull your string through and it cuts it at a taper so that taper is a lot easier to be able to stick through your needle now you can tie it in a knot one way to do it is you'd actually pull it up if you're doing something heavy for a long time you could pull
pull it up. You could actually split the thread with your needle. Pull this all the way down over the needle and it gives you a knot down here. I'm not going to be doing that, but uh, I'm just using, I have larger holes on this. If you didn't, um, you could use that method. I'm just going to be doing it like this. I have here, I got my stuff glued together, so just to hold it into place while I, uh, while I work on it. I've got my little clamps. But the other thing that you could do if if you wanted to hold this piece exactly how you needed you could use a, a vise which I have one I don't feel like freezing and so I'm working on this in the front room and uh, so you could hold it in a vise and it'll put put a rag some kind of cloth in there and squeeze your leather together gently you don't want to you don't want to put an imprint on it um, emboss your leather with a vice chuck but um, the other thing you could do is you could buy what's called a leather pony I'll throw a picture up and that's a traditional leather clamp that's got soft ends on it it's made out of wood and it clamps on on everything nice and you sit it in your lap or some of them have a little stand and you can work on it on a, on a leather pony but uh, we're doing it with our household stuff that we have access to here okay to start what we're gonna do make sure your holes are lined up and pull this all the way through, you want to line up, not your needles, but you want to line up your thread ends. And then we're going to pull all of our thread, kind of like you're lacing a shoe. I'm not tall enough for this. So what we want is we want them 100% straight and we start our stitching. Typically you would just start your stitching right from the beginning. with a regular stitch, or I'll, which I'll show you in a minute here, but with these large punched holes, I'm going to do something a little, little different, and I'm going to make, I'm going to go around my first hole, I'm going to go back through it, went through the hole once, through the second hole, now I'm going to come back to just kind of make a knot on the top plus it's going to make you'll see as I show you the stitch this is just going to make the, the first hole a little more full we gotta get these back to even pull a little more of this Okay, so what we're working on is I work, this is my front side of my knife, so this is the finished side. <coughs> when you're stitching here, I'm going to raise you up a little bit and tilt you down. When we're 
we're stitching here, what we want to do is you want to start, we want to make this our front stitch. Sometimes your back stitch doesn't quite look as pretty. So our front stitch, we're going to come through the back. Oop, wrong hole. We're going to come through the back with the first needle. You want this thread now to cross over on this side of the thread that's coming on this side. We're going to go back on roughly on the top of this stitch. When you're doing this on the opposite side, you'll see I'm pulling down to keep the thread out of the way as this needle goes through so that I'm not piercing that thread. So then when we get this thread in, if it ever goes through, This thread is going to go through, basically through the middle of this loop and back towards you. It's important, and we'll pull, it's important that you keep the exact same stitch pattern. If you don't have the exact same stitch pattern, you'll see it as your knife starts to unfold here. Pierced one. and tight then what I like to do is pull it towards me to elongate that thread so we go back to our left hand which is the back side of the knife I come through cross over this thread through with the front side we go under we go through this loop and we pull it all together again tighten that up and pull so I can show you the stitching pattern then we'll uh, we'll speed me up so we go through the first one loop it over second one goes through and through this loop up with here is a stitch like this you can see my just decorative stitching on on the top here how all of the they all kind of form that twisted rope kind of pattern same thing as I'm doing here you just don't have multiple layers I just punch this and stitch it just to have 
decorative stitching on it. So that's all you do there. All right, so we made it all the way around. I pulled my, my spacer out of the middle. I was holding the space for the knife. Now, the other important part to hand stitching leather is how do you end a stitch? So to end the stitch, basically, we're gonna recopy what we did already. We're gonna go back three stitches and then you simply cut the rope off so we are at the top here this is when it gets a little tricky because our holes are pretty much full Pliers to go through. So, since we're going in reverse here, we're going to take this one, loop it on this side of the string. loop now pull them tight sure it's still on the right side of the hole. And through our loop. is just I noticed when I talk to people or see things about hand stitching leather um, 
some people say that you can you can go back through one cut it off there's really not a way to tie it being being that it's leather um, you know it's not on fabric you would just tie a little knot and pull it and uh, and the knots pretty much it our loop here so unless we go back through about three of these there's really nothing that's keeping it there now what I'm gonna do since this is the front side of the knife is normally we went through three you can see our our little double stitching here and these three um, so I'm gonna take my needle because I'd like this not to be cut off on the front Let me find where that hole goes there we go I'm gonna pull Front end thread back through. And I'm going to just cut it off here. Easy enough. Alright, I do have a couple more things to, to stitch on here. But now that I've showed you exactly how to do the stitching, I'll do them and fast forward. Our other part here is now we've combined a couple layers, three layers of leather, and they're not exactly flat in the parts that we cut. Could, uh, could look a little better. Now, they do have uh, a leather knife where I've seen people, you know, and they shave it, and you can do your shaving to get everything down to the right leather, right level, eh, leather level, um, which is good to start and get a, a general, get them all in a kind of in the same ballpark once you do have them in the same ballpark what you can use is this isn't a super coarse grit um, but on your on your open ends you can use a, a sandpaper you have your sandpaper where you can put it down on something flat it just lets you be able to to drag your leather across it straight up and down just so that you're not on a heavy tilt doing one side more than the other Nice looking finished edge. I'll continue that around the point and on the other side there. And we'll have to uh, sew our back on and we'll be all done.
All right, everybody, here we have it. Here's our finished sheath. Pull the knife out here. We have all of our decorative functional stitching. We got three plies on the sheath part being a back layer, a middle I'll show you here. Two sides in the middle here just to uh, separate, let the blade slide against them so it's not cutting on our stitching. And then we have a front piece. We, I went over the stitching for you. Here's our, our back. Like I said, when you, when you cut the threads, you want to try to put them on the back just so they're not showing leave everything pretty decorative up front there's where we anchored our our clasp here that'll hold our handle I thought I had a snap and I don't so I'll put a snap on it the snap you can buy them from the store it's as simple as you punch a hole the size of the snap and they sell them where they actually crimp in so you'd crimp one piece the part with the little nipple on it down here you'd crimp the the button part up here so you can fold it over and snap it pretty self-explanatory then you can get a, a snap set of them for a couple bucks but we got our nice belt loop about a three inch belt loop so it should be fine for any size belt and There we have it. Finished product. So there you have it. Now you know how to st hand stitch leather. Hope the information was good for you. Hope it helped you out a little bit. We learned together. Product come out, I think, real nice. You hit me with a with a like. Throw a subscribe in there. You keep liking them, I'll keep making them.